Ebony Crow back again, and what you're looking at is the arcade cabinet that I bought uh, from the Pinball Expo uh, back in October. In fact, this footage that you're looking at is from October, from my Pinball Expo pickups video. It needed a little bit of work, and I decided to make a follow-up video. Well, here we are, like uh, almost three months later. It's almost the end of the year. Uh, I did spend quite a, a bit of time working on this, and we're going to switch over to the footage I'm actually recording right now, and bam, here you go. This is the way this looks right now. Uh, I'll kind of walk through uh, some of the changes that I've made, and um, I'm not 100% completely done yet, uh, but um, hardware-wise, it, it probably is. I need to do a little bit I, I need to do a little bit more to this, but for the most part, it's working as intended, even a little bit more. Uh, for starters, I didn't know if I was going to replace this top plexiglass plate piece because it's all kind of scratched up. I could buy a brand new one for, um, let's say, uh, I think maybe $70. Um, but, I, you know, I decided, no, I'm not going to buy it. It doesn't really bother me that much. And I'm going to be using this as a table most of the time anyway. Uh, so why buy a brand new, you know, sheet on top of it when I'm probably just going to scratch that one up eventually. Um, control panel wise, I did um, get new graphics for the panels. I actually got new boards here and I uh, drilled in new buttonholes. I changed the layouts of them. These joysticks are completely different. They're, uh, they were really cheap. I just wanted eight way octagonal uh, gates on there. For all of them, there were only four-way ones before, so I replaced that. Uh, as you can see, I should have pointed this out first. The most obvious thing is I replaced all the trim with yellow trim. So, uh, yeah, all the other the buttons are same buttons from before, just cleaned up a bit. On this side here, I changed the layouts as well to, uh, like, be more of a street fighter. It was, like, already dusting junk already on this. <laughs> <laughs> I did this quite some time ago, but yeah, these uh, graphics here, I ordered them from, shoot, I can't even remember now, but I did order these new graphics. This, the one on top is still the same, but I did, because they were all like kind of bent and torn or whatever. But again, this is brand new, but all the other pieces of wood are exactly the same. And I did make a, a change too with um, the way this panel, uh, the, the panel, it didn't open up before. Uh, if you it had to actually go inside and, uh, when I was taking this thing, it was a pain to take it apart because of all the L brackets that were in there, but I made that change. But before I go any further, I did add a volume knob on the side here so I could control the volume of the thing. Um, that's another thing I changed is it don't, no longer has the game elf inside of it. It's, I did have a Pandora's box inside of it, Pandora's box DX. Um, I heard it was because it supported, um, see okay there we go and then we do have sound there we go but yeah now i can control the volume without opening the thing up and going inside the pandora's box and controlling the volume knob on that thing i added these screws uh i added the screws on the outside i didn't really care too much about aesthetics because it's not like i'm reselling this or anything so if i take this screw out let's see and this is going to be the same on the other two sides as well so let me get this screw out. I'm doing this with one hand. All right. So get both screws out. And now this opens up just like that. And we can access any buttons or what we need. I didn't really do any um, <laughs> wire management or anything. I, uh, I might someday in the future do that. But... Um, yeah, I just did this because then it was just way easier to access it. So I've got this all back together. But yeah, I could do that for any of the sides. So we won't have to do it frequently at all. But uh, something that's just a little bit easier to access that now. And uh, the monitor, I actually replaced the monitor entirely. Uh, turned out the monitor that was in there was upside down. And it was upside down for a reason. It was because the there was one bad viewing angle. And that one bad view viewing angle was if you're looking, if the, this was the bottom of the monitor, if you're looking at, at it like this, uh, it, you had a really bad viewing angle. So the monitor that was in there was actually in there upside down. And with the game elf, it wasn't a problem to have the whole screen flipped upside down. But with the Pandora's box, it didn't allow that with the menu. Now, uh, I did install 
Pandori on it and I did uh like you know tossed them a couple bucks so I could get unlimited updates and everything for Pandora because I think it's just an awesome tool that fixed a whole lot of stuff with this Pandora's box but uh, uh yeah but with like the going into the files with uh, Pandora and stuff I can on a per game basis rotate the screen and whatnot but uh, I couldn't have the main menu or anything be upside down so uh, when I did get a replacement monitor for this, I bought it off of uh, AliExpress. It was a 19-inch uh, 4x3, and, and it's got really good viewing angles from all sides. So that yeah, was about $100, uh, but uh, really happy with this monitor I put in there. And I do have the other one I could use for whatever reason. But I'm going to show off the one mod that I am um, most happy with, and that is this. If I If I take this corner here, I can flip this up. And now, if I wanted to play, you know, with it, like as in an arcade, more of an arcade style, I can do that. Um, so, yeah, this is what it looks like on the other side. I What I did was I added some hinges here, here on the other side, a set of hinges, really cheap. And these struts here that are supports. So, yeah, they'll, uh, they're kind of, I don't know if, I guess, I guess... <laughs> But uh, extremely cheap stuff on Amazon. Just had the wire it in there. I, as you can see, the wiring is not uh, not the best. Actually, non-existent pretty much because I didn't really uh, wire anything. But since this had a different kind of plug, I did have to you know wire that in a little bit differently. In fact, I just kind of uh, changed it to a regular outlet plug here, so I could just plug the monitor in. It's just the VA, VGA monitor. There's no HDMI or anything, which is fine for what I needed here. And as you can see, there's the Pandora's box in there. The game itself is still kind of in there, it's just at the bottom. If I really need to swap that out, I can do that if I need me. But yeah, and there's the monitor itself. I kind of uh, <laughs> changed the way that was mounted in there because it had uh, didn't have the same kind of mounts as the other thing. I just put this giant piece of board in there to prevent it from falling through. If as a backup for these other plastic clips, because that's all I really had, but they fit, so... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that ain't really going anywhere. And uh, as you see on the other side, too, to just to make it a little bit cleaner, I added this electrical tape around the edge there. Uh, it doesn't really bother me. And again, it's it just, you know, just to whatever, make it a little bit cleaner, even if it is just electrical tape. Now, as for the Pandora's box itself, it did have 3,000 games in it. But I've already gone through the list. I went through each one, one at a time, and I marked whichever ones needed to be rotated. Um, and I took out... All of the games that were like duplicates. So we're left with, let's see, some of these were actually added on because of uh, Pandori. But let's see, the, the, it actually took out almost 500. Uh, so I think this is the last official one is David Beckham Soccer. Not all of these arcade games either. In fact, I believe that one's a PlayStation 3 game. And that's a, that's a, some of the little bit of a disappointment with this thing is like if you're looking at the first, the first whole bunch of games, these like Street Fighter EX Plus and uh, EX2 Plus, all of these where it says 3D, these are actually all uh, PlayStation games, PS1 games. But then this is uh, the arcade game. And I actually took out a lot of the games that were hex, duplicates. Um, I took out at the bottom here, it, this allows you to add games as well. So there were a whole bunch of sample games that Pandora put in there that were kind of free to give away. So we've got like a PC Engine game here, a Genesis game here, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. And I could add more games. I just never really got around. I, I tested a couple. So <laughs> um, one I added was Chopper Command for uh, the Atari 2600, of course. That was just the one I wanted to, to, you know, test out. Oh, there we go. I just hold it down a bit. And there we go. Chopper Command. In arcade form, and to get out of every game, you hold down the player one button for a little bit of time. There we go. It comes up here. Uh, you can save state if you want. And some games don't support it, but most of them seem to. Uh, we can exit, and we're back at the main menu. Uh, another thing we could do here is if we press the uh, player one star here, we get a menu search. We can filter out games. Uh, the one downside I saw with the search... Oh, here we can see the most recent games I've played, too. Uh, the most the the downside with the search is it only searches for the games that are already in the system. If you added games, they don't show up in the search for some reason. At least that's what I've seen. 
Uh, let's get back out of here. And if we go to the end here, uh, I had to add in Mortal Kombat 3 and Mortal Kombat 2. Uh, it, it requires a specific main version. Um, so that's not any any old Mortal Kombat ROM. It's It's got to be the one that was meant for a specific version of MAME. I can't remember what version it is now because I actually did it some time ago. Same thing with Mortal Kombat 3. Now, uh, Teenage, Mutant, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I had to add that one and Turtles in Time. because Not because it wasn't already included in the Parandora's box, but because the version they included was the European version and... Normally that wouldn't annoy me, but it kind of annoyed me because it, there it's Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. So I actually removed those games off the list and I included the correct versions or they're correctly named Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, but again, there's a whole, if I think of games, I, I can add them in. I think I can just pop them onto a USB drive and plug the USB drive in there, but I've actually replaced the... SD card that's in the Pemdora's box, but that, to, to do that, you have to open it up. So I put in a bigger SD card, and uh, but again, if I'm going to add more games that way, I'd have to actually take the whole thing apart, take the SD card out, and uh, pop them on there, and then put it back together. Um, and when I said also that I took notes of the games that I would have to rotate, I actually didn't wind up going ahead and rotating them, uh, and the reason was because uh, of how much of a hassle it is to actually update the script to allow that. Because it's not so much having a, a list of 100-some games that I had to update uh, to it put uh, command lines in the script to say, okay, for this game, rotate it. It's the fact that, okay, I knew the name of the game, but then I had to find the name of the file that MAME uses all as well, and then include that in the command line. I just didn't feel like looking up 100 plus um, what file names in MAME to get. Maybe one day I will feel like doing that, but <laughs> it's that, you know, we're not anywhere near that. Let's see, the Mortal Kombat trilogy. This is again um, the PlayStation version. And again, every time you load up something, it's going to say loading. Another thing I need to do is find a more uh, arcade cocktail appropriate games to put on here so you could do more of appropriate head-to-head -head thing um like the atari tetris had a cocktail version now the atari tetris is on here but it is more the stand-up arcade now uh, um version where you know players sit side by side i'm going to try and put the uh, cocktail version on this so yeah mortal kombat trilogy and to get in here come oh you know what it is it's loading from cd <laughs> um you know i thought Chameleon was, because that was the difference between the PlayStation and Nintendo version was Chameleon, but yeah. But uh, for, yeah, like something like Pango that was flipped correctly, so now we can actually pop this down. That would be nice if I could pop a button, hit a button, and have it flip, but uh, unfortunately we're not released up like that. And uh, Pango with the Game Elf was like running terribly, and it that was one of the reasons why I decided to switch to this Pandora's box. Like, all those Konami beat-em-ups, like Sunset Riders, Simpsons, Teenage, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, all of those type of games ran terribly on the Pandora's box. And, uh, I'm sorry, not, they ran terribly on the Game Elf. Sorry, they run great on the Pandora's box, especially with the uh, updates that the Pandora team had done. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's no reason to let this go any longer. I'm just kind of showing off pretty much what this thing ended up being uh, after I picked it up several months later. I mean, it took me quite a while to get through all 3,000 games, but I did it here and there, and I did it. And even though I have a spreadsheet that marks which games I need to kind of uh, add command lines to to fix, I'm not I'm probably going to be doing that anytime soon. But it, it doesn't matter. 95% uh, of what's on here works perfectly as it is right now anyway. So we'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching. See you all next time. And if you don't see my last video of the year, Happy New Year.